In his own day, Bayard Rustin was a minority within a minority who tirelessly agitated for change, spending nights in jail opposing U.S. policy at home and abroad. He was an African-American fighting against segregation, a gay man fighting against homophobia, and a pacifist fighting against endless war. Rustin was a key advisor to Dr. Martin Luther King and introduced him to Gandhi's teachings on nonviolence. He helped Dr. King start the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957. Six years later, Bayard Rustin was the chief organizer of the historic 1963 March on Washington for jobs and freedom, rallying hundreds of thousands of people for economic justice, full employment, voting rights, and equal opportunity. We have to stand up and speak for ourselves. We have to fight for ourselves. My life has always been is to fight for something. Because most of the kids here were alcoholics and people with AIDS. And that's one of the reasons that I, like, I stayed on for as long as I did until we got thrown out, because there were people here that really needed help. and. The community was not here to help them. Star House came out of the organization, organization Star, which stood for Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries. And it was the uh, brainstorm of Sylvia, Marsha P. Johnson, and Bubbles Rose Lee. Marsha and Sylvia got a hold of this building and they were using it. It's sort of the model for Transy House here, in fact, uh, as a. Uh, kind of collective place for the uh, trans girls that were out living on the street, you know, homeless. Marsh and Sylvia mothered them. I mean, they mothered everybody. So I considered Sylvia to be my mother. Everybody in this house called her ma. I mean, she was uh, well, that's what she was. <laughs> Chelsea had taught, told us about Sylvia Rivera and how she had this housing for trans street people or just queer street people in the early 70s. We sort of began to see ourselves a little bit in that model. And then lo and behold, Sylvia Rivera showed up and hmm. you know started to come over to visit us. And she was like, oh, wow, you people are doing what I always dreamed of doing. We always represented sort of a more radical uh, activist approach in a way or or political approach everybody 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 everybody, everybody needs a living wage oh, to get them through get them through get them through get them through everybody needs a living wage everybody needs a living they've done to destroy housing in San Francisco, how they're taking, care, taking advantage of low income and second language communities, how they're leading to additional, their practices have led to additional homelessness and job loss in San Francisco. And you know, so I, del so I uh, read the letter through the window because the inside door was locked and I delivered it to Harvey Milk's old camera store. This is where he organized 
Harvey built coalitions with labor. Harvey built, built coalitions with people of color, in this space. with, with uh, day laborers. Harvey Milk was a coalition, but Harvey Milk understood that we are in all communities and that all issues are our issues, That's especially right. economic justice ones. That's right. And we are asking human rights campaign to live up to the legacy of the man whose store they occupy. That's right. If you were at City Hall on Thursday, there was a hearing on LGBT folks and the shelter system. And we had yeah. about 35 homeless queers testifying. And you know what they said over and over again? They will not go to shelters because they're not safe. So where are they going right. to be? On the streets. And guess what's going to happen if they're sitting or lying on the streets? They're going to be arrested. They're going to get hassled by the friggin' cops. Marty's Place, a gorgeous Victorian in the mission that the San Francisco Community Land Trust is working to preserve as housing for low-income people living with HIV and AIDS. This home helped hundreds during a time when it was needed the most. We need your help to continue the powerful legacy of Marty's Place. Our approach is a holistic approach. Um, we try to address um, the immediate needs and immediate issues such as, as, as say, homelessness, they get discriminated, uh, primary medical care, we try to connect them with different um, orga uh, organizations and different services. Um, support groups that are ethnic, um, ethnic specific right, right. so that they can feel a right. sense of identity, right. cultural identity. And all this are all wrapped in this drop-in center. That this kind of alliance was possible, no one would have believed it. I don't think the miners, certainly in the Welsh Valley that we went to 12 months ago, would have imagined that they would have had in their community the largest single donating group as a gay group, a gay and lesbian group. I think they, they would have just laughed. And I think we would as well. Um, it was really illogical. When you think about it, it is quite illogical to actually say, well, I'm gay and I'm into defending the gay community, but I don't care about anything else. It's ludicrous. It's important that if you're defending communities, that you also defend all communities and not just one. A lot of mining communities have found out what police harassment is for the first time, perhaps, and things like that, which gay people have known about for years. We were next in line after lesbians and gays, black men, black women. There was another fair group that was anybody's for grabs, and that was the miners. And I mean, it's a horrifying position to be in. You cannot sympathise with an oppressed group until you've actually been a member of one. Well, I know that they're going to be coming to, they're going to be taking part in the Gay Pride Week. We need affordable housing. What works is people getting their own places, people getting jobs, being able to go to school. And I never thought I had a voice, you know. I never thought that I had anything useful to tell people. I was, you know, I'm just, I just wasn't a speaker. And that night they handed me that mic and I haven't shut up since. That's it's right. like... <laughs> <laughs> For my community, my message is get more involved. There's a big portion of our community that need your help.